day and welcome to the FinTech Atlas by Financial IT. Today, I am joined by Mikhail Paris from FinTech Scotland. Mikhail, thank you for your time. Uh, our standard five question interview. And the first one is, could you please explain a little about who is FinTech Scotland and what is the organization's history? Absolutely. Uh, so FinTech Scotland was launched in 2018 by Stephen Ingoldu and myself. We're both extended life and part of a, a group of companies coming together uh, to create FinTech Scotland. And that was the private sector, the public sector, universities, um, and regulators. So we set up the company as a limited company. We're not a government agency. We're not a representative body. We are what you would call a cluster management organization, which is a term that's recognized at the European level by the European Commission. Uh, and pleased to say that we are the only fintech cluster in Europe to um, have their silver accreditation for cluster management excellence. Um, and that's a lot to do with all the people in the cluster, the, the variety and the level of collaboration. So we work with 235 fintechs um, and 35 strategic partners, which um, really are the large financial institutions in the UK, uh, some of the big four, the universities, uh, Edinburgh, Napier, Strathclyde and Glasgow, uh, the FCA uh, and other professional services. Um, and, and the goal really is threefold, uh, accelerate innovation, uh, develop collaboration opportunities and develop the cluster, uh, which goes far beyond Scotland uh, or the UK, where we've got the FinTech National Network, but around the world, uh, in fact, uh, I'm just back from Money 2020 in Amsterdam last week, where uh, we um, gathered with all the other European hubs um, for our quarterly meeting, uh, where we try to develop new initiatives together. Yes, um, forgive me, the other hubs were the UK hubs, were a whole lot of hubs from across Europe. Yes, so you've got the FinTech National Network, which is FinTech North, FinTech Wales, FinTech Northern Ireland, Innovate Finance, uh, Supertech Midlands, um, and I'm probably forgetting one, um, but we've got this group that I convene um, every couple of weeks on a call, but also in a more formal way in person on a regular basis to try to drive the agenda for FinTech in the UK. Uh, we're all very good at different things, and we think there's uh, value in coming together as opposed to competing. Excellent. Um, my next question is um, uh, this. Uh, most other organizations that represent a, cl a cluster of fintech-related organizations in their particular part of the country very quickly highlight uh, their advantages, such as uh, much lower cost of living than London, Southeast England, good transport infrastructure, and you can fly into or out of X directly to Europe or the rest of the world, world-class universities, um, and enough uh, entrepreneurs on the ground, plus links, as you've mentioned, with the rest of the world. Are all those the key characteristics in Scotland, or are there any other things that I'm missing? So they're definitely, you know, all, all here, uh, everything you've mentioned. Um, what I will say, our main difference in Scotland is what I was starting to allude to, is the collaboration and the cluster effectiveness at coming together. Um, I'll give you a, a very quick example uh, to yes. bring it to life. We've just launched recently the new Financial Regulation Innovation Lab with some UK research innovation funding. Uh, in Glasgow, which was chosen as uh, one of the key accelerators by UK government. Um, so it was bringing together two universities that don't really always work together, Glasgow and Strathclyde, both in the same cities, but also bringing Morgan Stanley, Tesco Bank, um, you know, uh, Virgin Money, um, and a lot of like Deloitte and a lot of other brands that don't usually collaborate um but they are very close to us as partners and therefore are willing to come together to look at industry-wide problems so we had applications from all around the world from fintechs and, and other tech companies 
we had that great involvement from the, the financial sector. We had the university with their researchers uh, being involved in this innovation call. And it really shows what's possible in Scotland. What's, it's something which is not very possible anywhere else. Yes. You, and, and potentially due to our size, we're a small country. Um, everyone knows each other. But it makes it, therefore, a lot more well, easier to connect and develop partnerships and opportunities. Um, and it's not me saying that. The proof is in the pudding. Uh, through this innovation call, two companies that were not in Scotland decided to open operations in Scotland in just a few months. Uh, one from Canada, one from London. Um, and it works very well. Um, we're not competing with London. We'll never be as big as London. We don't want to be as big as London. Uh, sometimes small is beautiful. If anything, we work very well with London. If you take a company like Modular, one of the leader in the fintech payment space, they've got their headquarters in London, but they're growing their team here, over 200 people in Scotland, because of that support they get from us, from Scottish Enterprise, from other uh, companies, uh, which is something you wouldn't get elsewhere, um, I think. Thank you. Thank you for that. Where does the Scottish government come into the picture? They stay uh, and work alongside us. So we, we take part in some consultations uh, from time to time. Uh, myself, I'm on um, an advisory group for the tech export plan for, for Scottish government. Uh, but uh, my CEO, Nicola, and our chair, Stephen, are also involved at many level, whether it's Scottish government or UK government. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that fintech is at the forefront and, and front of mind for, for all those, um, uh, whether it's uh, MPs or, or first ministers even. Um, so, so we involve them. They are involved with us through uh, their um, economic development agency, Scottish Enterprise, uh, or the Department of Business and Trade. Uh, in fact, uh, I mentioned we were at Monday 2020 last week. It was a UK uh, DBT pavilion under which you had a Scottish Enterprise, Scottish Development International and ourselves and the other regions of the UK. So we work very closely. And the reason being is there is now no need to prove, because we've done that, that fintech is very important for the economy. Um, it generates a, a, a great amount of GVA for, for the country, whether it's Scotland yes. or the UK, and the potential has not even been, um, you know, scratched. We, we are at the very beginning. Uh, when you move into things like AI or blockchain, or we, we're in the infancy of those technologies, and yes. there's much more that, that will be driven from them. You've uh, spoken in the last few minutes about some significant achievements of uh, FinTech Scotland. Are there any that you haven't mentioned that you feel we should talk about? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the list would be very long. Uh, yeah. So like I said, we're the only cluster in Europe, FinTech cluster in Europe, to have that silver accreditation. We're very proud of that. We also launched the first, uh, it's a UK first um, FinTech research and innovation roadmap. Um, in collaboration with the industry. So it's very much industry-led. We interviewed the large FS, we interviewed the fintechs, we interviewed uh, consumer groups, regulators, universities, and so on and so forth. And we've got that great report that helps us drive our strategy. And it's been recognized by, um, well, no, no other than the person that was responsible to deliver the fintech sector review for HMT, mm -hmm. um, the, Mr. Khalifa. Uh, Ron Khalifa, oh, yes. who, who, who kind of referenced our, our, our RNI roadmap in his, in his paper and also prefaced the our RNI roadmap. Um, in, in Scotland, uh, we've got the Logan Report, which is a tech sector review. Again, in there, we are recognized as a model of clusters um, where uh, other clusters, developing clusters, should, should look at us to see how to, to do it best. Um, and we're a bit different. You know, we are, uh, when you look at other or some of our peers in the UK or Europe, very often there will be um, membership organization. We're not a membership organization. The fintechs don't pay anything to be part of Fintech Scotland. We are supported by the rest of the cluster, yes. uh, which again shows the commitment, which mm. in itself is a win. Uh, you yes. don't get that by chance. You get that because there's commitment. 
Uh, but there's also a lot of other wins when it comes to collaborations. Uh, I mentioned some of the innovation calls and innovation labs that we work uh, and develop with the likes of TSB, Lloyds, uh, Phoenix, um, and those have generated great collaboration between large FS and, and fintechs, mm. uh, which drives innovation on one side and growth for, for those scale up and startups, which is fantastic. Um, other than that, there, there's the kind of everyday wins of, of seeing those companies move from startup to scale up and scale up to growth and exits. Uh, and we, we like to think that we've got a little uh, part of uh, of that success that can be attributed to the work we do. Um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty to shout about. We also host in Scotland the UK FinTech Symposium every year uh, with the whole FinTech National Network um, that I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, for the first time, uh, the FCA came to Glasgow for the demo day of the tech sprint. That's the first time they did it outside of London. That was um, last month. So that again shows that Scotland is seen as a center of excellence for fintech. Excellent. Um, if you look forward for the next two to three years, um, what are the big achievements do you expect? Or do you anticipate the next three years are going to be like the last two or three years where you have a huge number of achievements, none of which are particularly spectacular in their own right, but when you put them all together, give a very powerful and positive picture. Yeah, I think um, going back to the research and innovation roadmap, we're two years in, it's a 10 years roadmap. So we'll keep going at it and develop all the actions that we said we, we, we would look at. So I mentioned the Financial Regulation Innovation Lab, which falls under the reg tech pillar. There's three other pillars in that uh, roadmap. One is climate. And we started to do some work with uh, Space Scotland to look at, for example, how satellite imagery can be used or satellite data can be used to enhance some of the FinTech proposition around ESG. Um, in the payment pillar, we've got payment which uh, includes crypto, embedded payment, uh, and others. Uh, we'll be looking at what needs to be done to encourage the use of technologies like, for example, blockchain or or looking at uh, CBDCs or things like that. Um, so there, there's plan behind that. I can't really speak about today, but we've got we've got plans around developing other centers of excellence. Um, and then the final pillar is open finance. And under open finance, we're doing some great work with uh, Smart Data Foundry, based in Edinburgh. We, we're working with CFIT in the UK um, and doing some innovation calls in that respect with, with PSB at the minute. They've got an innovation call that live around the open banking and open finance. Mm. So there, there's a whole, range, a whole range of activity for the next you know, uh, two, three, four years. We, we, we're not going to be bored, that's for sure. There's plenty to do. Uh, and in terms of what success would look like, well, I'd love to see more companies coming to Scotland. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were averaging one a month, uh, which was quite good. Companies coming from Australia, New Zealand, America, London, uh, the Nordics, um, Africa. Uh, so, so we want to continue to do that. We want to continue to see companies that are not fintechs pivoting their solutions become fintechs because they can see how the solutions whether it's data whether it's geospatial data whether it's um climate data can come and enhance the whole proposition to drive yes. the, the the innovation in the uk thank you um i guess the next question is a an extra one which has just come come to me uh in speaking with your peers in wales the impression I got is that most of the fintech action is concentrated in two areas. One is Cardiff and Environs, and the other is North Wales, but particularly Wrexham. Is fintech in Scotland concentrated in any one place, or do you have members and stakeholders in uh, Edinburgh, Glasgow, uh, Aberdeen, Dundee, and other places? Absolutely. Um... It would be fair to say that the majority of fintechs uh, are in that central belt between Edinburgh yes. and Glasgow. Uh, Glasgow is uh, gl the, the Glasgow fintech scene is growing quite fast. Uh, there, there's a lot of investment in the in the city. There's a lot of of initiatives that that drive 
entrepreneurs there, which is great to see. Uh, there's always that competition between Edinburgh and Glasgow, and, and I think that's very healthy because yes. it makes them try very hard. But if you look at Dundee, for example, um, hist historically, they've been a hotbed for innovation in the payment space. Uh, you've got big players like Ingenico, NCR, uh, and therefore you've had a lot of innovation happening there um, in the payment space, whether you look at Paysand or, or whether you look at um, other companies like uh, uh, Miconex, uh, all in Dundee, uh, some insurers like Broker Insights. So there's definitely a hub there in the yes. Aberdeen. We've got uh, some companies there. Uh, one moved recently to Aberdeen from from London, uh, Zip Zero. Um, so you dare to say Central Belt, obviously majority of fintechs, but there are other pockets in Scotland yes. uh, where you can see innovation happening as well. Excellent. As you probably know, um, CFIT, the Centre for Finance Innovation Technology identified five challenges uh, that they seek to solve. Uh, I had a very provocative interview with Es Britain last year, in which I said, Es, I'm going to be provocative. Uh, I only hear huge amounts of good news about fintech in the UK, and everything points to it really being the crown jewel of the UK economy. He agreed. And I then said, that being the case, why is it necessary to have CFIT? And why was it necessary for Ron Khalifa to write the famous report? And he basically said that although it is the crown jewel of the UK economy, there are five challenges. So we're asking everybody to uh, comment on these challenges, um, identifying how much of a problem each of the challenges is, and you know, perhaps saying one or two words about them. Uh, so zero means no problem at all. One is minor problem. Two is minor but manageable problem. Three is medium-sized problem. Four is large. Or five is huge. Um, so challenge one is regulations. And the basic problem is that the regulators are struggling to keep up with the actual developments in FinTech. Yeah, I think with that one, we have to be careful. Um, it, it is something that we, we obviously need to consider and but we, we are very lucky with our regulator in the UK. Um, I speak to a lot of different countries around the world, and they wish they had the FCA as a regulator. Yes. Um, it is pro-innovation. They are listening. They've got their text prints. They've got their sandbox, sandboxes, actually. Um, so they are doing a lot. They are involved with FinTech Scotland, for example. They are involved in our Financial Regulation Innovation Lab. Uh, they were very keen to help us develop. Our CEO, Nicola, comes from the FCA. She started on second yes. month from the FCA and then became a uh, FinTech student employee. So the FCA is, is, is really much there. They, you know, if you look at crypto as an example, you can argue they are maybe too slow. Uh, some yes. people would say that. Um, I will say, look at what's been happening around the world. What it means to me is that sometimes being patient and and taking all the insights you need to regulate properly is important because at the yes. end of the day, they are here to protect consumers. Um, mm. And if you look at FTX or, or other things that have happened, um, I'm very happy to say that it couldn't have happened in the UK uh, because we are maybe taking our time, but we'll come up with the right regulation. So I would put maybe a two, important to keep an eye on, but there's a lot of work being done there. So it's not a major concern. We are actively helping them and they're helping us. Right. That sounds like it's one or two to me. Yeah, one or two. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, challenge two is funding. Some fintech entrepreneurs lack access to the capital that they need. Or in Scotland, maybe they don't, given what's happening up there. So funding, where would you see that? Yeah, as a yeah funding is... Um, is it would be a five i would say um yes. there, there's different ways to speak about it there's london so the rest of the uk versus london and then there's the uk versus the rest of the world um we if, if you look at valuations in the us um we can compete uh, at a global level, because what a Series A 
is in the UK versus what a Series A is in the US, it's 10 times the amount. So straight away, you, you start with, with a disadvantage when you want to compete at a global level. At the UK level, um, the majority of, of, of VCs and, and the majority of, of the capital is still in London. That has changed a bit with COVID, I think. It's fair to say that investors have been looking outside the M1, which yes, has been yes. great to see. What's also great to see is more and more we're getting inbound opportunities from investors. So recently we've been speaking with investors from the US, looking at their diversifying their portfolio and looking at maybe some cheaper deals as well mm -hmm. after the, the craziness of uh, the last few years post-pandemic and valuations going uh, skyrocketing. Maybe they're, they're recognizing that maybe sometime the UK can offer safer investments. Um, yes. so, so that's been very interesting. But yeah, it, it is a major concern um, for for me. Uh, we, it's, we've not tackled that issue. How do we fund those companies? Uh, yes. How do we allow them to flourish and export? Yeah. To so challenge three is talent. Many of the fintech players are, have been struggling to find the talented people that they need. Yeah. That. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a four. Um, maybe a three. Probably three. a four at the UK level, three in Scotland. We do get um, a lot um, coming from our universities. I know everyone said they've got the best universities, but when I look at Scotland uh, and Edinburgh, for example, that's the hotbed of AI. Yes. So we've got a lot of engineers. We've got a lot of very capable people of research happening. So and there's a lot of initiatives that encourage the creation of 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 um of a real talent pool. So you know it it's, it is an issue that needs to be tackled. Um, I wouldn't say that's uh, top of the list. I think it's yeah. it's um, surprisingly you know a lot of people speak about the the, the skill gap when it comes to tech. Um, recently, I've been speaking to a lot of entrepreneurs. The real skill gaps in Scotland is good salespeople because they all go to London where salaries are higher and, and everything. Yeah. So finding the fintech is not just tech. Uh, and I think it's very important, especially when we start to speak about diversity, when we speak about inclusion. Mm -hmm. Very often people feel like, well, we need more female in, te in, in fintech, which is absolutely yeah. true. We do. But that doesn't mean they have to do tech. I mean, they can if they want to. Yes. But fintech businesses need salespeople, they need marketing people, they need legal, HR, all those things. Uh, so we need to look at the, the, the whole uh, ecosystem here. But uh, yeah, a lot to be done still. Um, I would say Scotland, we are in a lucky position where we, we, we've got a lot going on to, to help drive change in that respect. Excellent. Challenge four is trade barriers and constraints on international trade. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, in some cases, I found people who had problems because of Brexit or whatever, and other situations where the companies in Region X have links with somewhere way outside the United Kingdom, and international trade barriers are hardly a problem at all. So international trade barriers would be a problem to you to what extent? Probably um, a one or two. Um, yes. I think it is important. I think it depends where. I think we've got some great initiatives in place. We obviously have that UK Australia fintech bridge that, that was set up, and that was a good example how regulators can work together to help yes. people uh, export. Um, I think. The fintechs we speak to, uh, the barrier is more in the knowing how to enter a market as opposed to market being difficult to enter. Got it. So Got it. it's a, how, how do you land there? Uh, because if, if you look at Brexit and a lot of the companies who were exporting in Europe or, or looking to export in Europe, they've taken actions. Uh, they've been to Estonia. They've, uh, they've they became e citizen there and they, 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 they've got a registered address. So that that is fairly easy to do. Or they've gone to the Netherlands to do the same thing. Um, so so that's not been a big issue. 
And when it comes to regulation, very often the, the fintechs who are looking to export will look at European regulation as well as UK regulation to make sure that they can export. So they, they're not doing too, such a bad job. It becomes quite difficult when you want to export in the US because there's 50 different regulators, uh, one per state. So that, that becomes a, a very hard work. Uh, and that's where in Scotland, we are lucky to also have that network called the Global Scots of Scottish people or non-Scottish people in love with Scotland who are very happy to do all the hand of a company wanting to move somewhere overseas and make them benefit from their network, which is fantastic. You can't buy that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's contact. It's, it's lending pads, it's it's investment contacts. So yes. there's a lot going on. That's a fair call. I mean, Ireland is the it is a country that has similar advantages, um, but Scotland definitely has them, and I can't think of many other places. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, I agree. Okay, chance number five is collaboration. And... Uh, uh, as Britain put it this way, protagonists across the fintech industry, in government, academia, financial circles, and the companies themselves have been operating in silos and not communicating enough. Do you agree with him? Do you see that as a problem or not? I'm listening to what you've done in Scotland. I would have thought you've got huge amounts of collaboration up there, and it's hardly a problem at all. Yeah. For, I mean, it's something we, we worked hard to to get, but it's it's for us, it's happening on a daily basis, we, we've got great level of collaboration um, and, and it's it's creating great results. Uh, so it's not something I'm absolutely worried about. It's, it's, it's working very well. I think that's got to be a zero then. Yeah, and, absolutely. And you, the you know, specific examples you've given in the last 20 minutes point that as well. Finally, um, are there any other observations that you feel we should discuss? Uh, anything that we perhaps missed in this interview? Uh, I think it was quite thorough, if I'm honest. Um, I think what's maybe interesting when, when you look at Scotland is, um, and I'm not going to pick London because I don't want to pick on London, but take any of the big fintech hubs, take New York. Take, very often you, you will see people doing things for, the, for, the, for themselves. Yes. Uh, in Scotland, there's a real sentiment, feelings that we are doing something for Scotland. Mm. And I think, um, and I don't know how you measure that, but it's always amazing when I speak to whether it's universities, fintechs, large financial institutions, they're happy to give their time, they're happy to give their people to, to make Scotland a great country for fintech. And, you know, I think that that's worth mentioning. Uh, they, they, it's, it's not just money, it's not just tech, it's not just innovation, there's a real passion to grow uh, the Scottish ecosystem. Fantastic. Mikhail Paris, thank you very much indeed. This has been a great interview. And thank you very much. Uh,